Who's in charge? Yeah. Right, cool. <laughs> and everybody in the first row. <laughs> wow. All right. So, basic bechamel to start it. I always like to use really, 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 really good butter because, again, your final product is going to be part of what you used to start it. So that's okay. what it is, but it's so single serve. Is that just like the sauce? Is that yeah, the, okay. the bechamel is just a base, basic bechamel is butter, flour, and milk. I, of course, only use heavy cream because milk is wimpy and it, I mean, heavy cream is just thicker, heavier, richer, worse for you. All this stuff. <laughs> the worse, the worse it is for you, the better it tastes. <laughs> the only Institute of America, their motto is butter. Fat is flavor. <laughs> it is, literally. That's true. Fire is hot. Huh? <laughs> Fire is hot. Well, that's good. So essentially, melt the butter. Don't we have a mirror and a camera? <laughs> <laughs> melt the butter. And whatever, like if you use four ounces of butter, use four ounces of flour. Equal parts, both of those makes your basic group. R O U X group. I've actually played that word in Scrabble, been doubted on it. I want it. It's cool. <laughs> aioli as well. I used the word aioli once, and you're like, that's not a word. That's <laughs> 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 awesome. Really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, the next one I made up a word, I was like, I'm telling you, they're like, okay. <laughs> when, I, when I was little, I used to go to my friend's house, my best friend's house, to play Monopoly. I used to bring my own money for my Monopoly board. <laughs> Oh, oh. And then at the end of the game, I was like, I'll give you $4,000 for Park Place. And they were like, okay, I don't need $4,000 in a Monopoly board. <laughs> I was like, here you go. And at the end of the game, I was like, I need all my money back. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, they still, my sister's still mad at me about that. They, elim they eliminated jail. That was my Did they really? They eliminated jail so that you could get through a monopoly game faster. I just like the sweep. We were listening on the news. No more jail. I know. What's the whole point? So it's like you're missing it all. I mean, the whole game is based on Atlantic City. So we want families to get through. Who knows Atlantic City doesn't go to jail? Come on. Or families. I mean, I've never been there. Atlantic City. Therefore, you go. Eliminate jail. All right, so butter's melted, we're happy. Then, if you were in an actual, like, your kitchen setting, you'd measure it, but since it's like, kind of looks a lot, I just punch it. Boom, my two pound bag of flour that I love that size. And you, when you're making the bechamel, you really have to keep whisking because if you let it burn, it sticks, it's awful, it's horrible, it tastes like burnt flour. I don't know if you ever, like, overcooked a cookie, they get that burnt, disgusting burnt flour taste. It's not fun. Just like at home. <laughs> now, what you do want to do though is you have to make sure that you cook the flour enough that it doesn't taste like flour. Okay. So, you actually have to cook it for a little bit. Keep whisking. So, one day I was riding my bike. Actually, true story I was riding my bike in Florida from a bar at BJ National and I was hammered and pedaling through the golf course. It, you know, it happens in Florida. <laughs> And uh, about midnight, I'm driving through a golf course, and in my head, I'm thinking, I wonder where alligators sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and I fell in a pond. Oh. Oh, so I left the bike, ran home. <laughs> Next day, I go to the, to the pro shop, and I said, hey, guys, um, did you guys find a bicycle by you know, mm -hmm. one of the ponds? They're like, yeah. I said, really? You can't hear me. What happened? I said, no, I was driving, and it you know, just fell in the water. I said, does it happen a lot? They're like, yeah, it happens all the time. I'm like, really? I'm like, no. What the hell were you doing on the golf course? <laughs> So yeah, after that, they, they started charging the car <laughs> Alright, so that's nice and bubbly. And now we're going to add the milk, or heavy cream, from Clover Dairies here in California. Real close. Real close. Yeah, they're good. A lot of people say you have to kind of temper your milk and you know, Really I've done it every way. If, you, if your base water breaks where it kind of separates, mm -hmm. whisk the heck out of it, add a little bit of water, warm water, and keep whisking, it comes back. Now this, the milk of course is colder, or the cream is colder, the roux is nice and hot, so when they come to even temperature, it starts thickening really nicely. Like this is already 
Green Tops. Now, if I had to still when I was camping, which I don't camp, but if I was camping, I'd be really happy. <laughs> wow, that's really, I mean, if you look at that, that's like wow. really perfect right now. Put a little more milk just to loosen it up. Or cream. When I say milk, I mean cream. <laughs> I mean, look at I mean, look, this stuff looks like. Wow. Hmm? Isn't it really? Wisconsin? Yeah, jeez. That's It will never be as good at all. Give it a shot. Yeah. A bunch of years ago, they said California had wine. The French lab. <laughs> And you miss him the cheese, and honestly, you can. I personally like this cheese because it's really sharp, I and mean, it has a lot of the crystallization in it, the, the flavors in it. The, it's just really good cheese. But I need mac and cheese with this cheese with Fontina on request, literally with about 15, 20 different cheeses on a regular basis. And this is really thick. Manny, I think the goat cheese one is probably my favorite. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. We do a goat cheese, rosemary, and roasted chicken mac and cheese. Mm -hmm. That I can make gluten free. I can make it 100% gluten free. And because some people are. <laughs> and um, lately I've had a lot of people asking about gluten free and vegan. So I came up with three or four different recipes for a vegan gluten free mac and cheese. Which is not the norm. Do you use cashews for that? Cashews? Nope. I've actually got three sources in Ohio that are giving me cheese-like product that melts, that works. Honestly, I like to ask me that. <laughs> yes? Man, do you use the whole corn uh, cream? Um, well, when I make a bechamel for myself, like for the shop, I use four quarts at a time. I use two pounds of butter, I use two pounds of, like, it's a, a larger batch. So depending on how much you're making, like right here, I'll probably use a little bit more. But I like it to be really, 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 really rich. Like here. Okay. This is really nice. Pasta, which I asked for Cavatappi, they got me Cavatelli. Oh, it works. <laughs> um, but it's great, so it's pretty good. That's something I do. I make my own pasta when I'm making like meat or long noodles. For mac and cheese, it's, it's not, it doesn't really make sense to make your own pasta for mac and cheese. You now with that cheddar, I melt a lot of it in there, but I leave mean, unless I'm just big chunks of it, we get that bite little special. And a lot of people, like my mother, for example, my mother will we'll go visit my mom in Florida. We'll have breakfast, and she's like, I don't understand. Every time I every time I eat breakfast, I burn the bacon. Well, you turn the freaking skillet to super high every single time. Control your heat is essentially my point because if you see that it's getting really hot, you can walk the heat, keep working, and then when your tent comes back down, you can back on the heat. Where in Florida is your mother? Margate, just uh, northwest of Fort Lauderdale. 
And actually, my condo was next door to hers. That's nice and cozy when I get home hammered, and she's like, hey, how are you? I'm like, ah! <laughs> I know you. <laughs> Bigger pan. Huh? Bigger pan. You know, honestly, one of the fun parts about cooking is that you can get dropped anywhere and you can figure out how to make do with whatever they give you. And <laughs> I've cooked a lot of places where this is very much more advanced than a lot of places that cook. So here you have essentially. A really nice, rich, unbelievably ridiculous mac and cheese. And anything you can bake it in, throw it in there. That's what I'm about to do. Well, not throw. Don't eat it. I was at the highest it went when I first developed, and I turned it to medium when I was whisking the milk because I want to burn. After the roost started really turning from that pale white to a little different color, then I tried to heat down and kept whisking so it wouldn't burn. And this is just even can go. So, they're probably this pancake like that's like an art. I've never seen an art before, and with really, really awesome, natural, unbelievably great butter. Toasted pancake with that, some sea salt flakes. I'm really excited about this pancake. I don't even tell it. <laughs> and honestly, I just generously pour it in there because what you're going to want to do is once you get, you're going to bake it like that, get it hot and bubbly, pull it out of the oven, it's going to be really hot. Mm -hmm. And it's going to burn your mouth because you're not going to want to make it eat it. So you're going to eat it anyway. You're going to burn your mouth. And then you're going to stir it all in and you get a crunch in every bite instead of just the top. And it's really good that way. I'll make that, like, for example, if you come to eat at the restaurant, I will make your mac and cheese like this, but I'll stir a panko in it as well, top it, bake it, and give it to you because you're going to eat it right now. For events like this where I have to make 40 portions in advance, I don't mix it in because then it's just going to get motion inside your mouth. So eat the crunch on top and. Boom! How's that? Yeah. Yay. 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 You want to tell them about the appetizers? Yes. Mm. Is anyone allergic to seafood? Too late. But the paramedics are here for it. Yeah. 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 They're on their way. The shrimp were, again, gorgeous. They brought this product, which is beautiful prawns that are marinated in Boucher and Riesling, oregano, orange zest, and shallots. I put them in the marinade yesterday about four. Yeah. Don't worry about that. Ziploc bag, air out, put it in the fridge, be able to look back at it. And I wrapped it with a little bit of radicchio and some of you watched me grill it because you were coming in there. And I think the flavors came through pretty well. The again, if you were ordering at a restaurant, you would have a stick on it. You just pick it up and eat it. And I would leave the tail on so they didn't up here, you know, no dirty fingers. Um, the oysters are, I think they're Kumamoto's tiny sweet deli the size of peas. A little slice of fat calf. Uh, Charlito was uh, screwed. When he was shipping the, the chorizo, he wasn't able to ship it, so we used fat, fat calf from here in Napa as opposed to Charlito's cocina for the chorizo. A nice fine slice of that. And then uh, queso fresco and a lemon, a Japanese lemon vinegar, which I think was pretty darn nice. Right? It was cool. And, and the pulled pork. Where it's actually Dr. Pepper and orange smoked pulled pork with a Chardonnay, a Bouchon, actually a Bouchon Chardonnay reduction with Sierra Nevada, Porta Mustard, and some vinegars and all kinds of fun stuff, and some brown sugar. And essentially, I substituted mustard for any tomato product in a barbecue sauce to make the sauce. And in my head, it makes sense. A lot of things do in my head that don't to everybody else, but I'll just go with it anyway. You like it? Awesome. And uh, then the grilled apples I just made. And <laughs> Yeah, a little piece of flower. So, man, where's uh, Rocky River? Rocky River is eight miles west of Cleveland, which is yes, the land of Cleve. <laughs> <laughs> I think he still lives there, actually. Um, funny thing about Cleveland, and I moved to Cleveland from Florida. I was in Naples for a while. And Cleveland's the only place that I got to, and I was like, all right, I'll be here for a year. I worked for Intercompton at the hotels. I get to Cleveland, and I'm like, all right, I'll be here for a year, and then I transferred to Miami and New York. Well, I'll go figure. I met, oh, I met a girl, bought some houses, boom, but guess what? I'm still there. Um, <laughs> but when I first got there, 
I was a little thrilled with it. Ten years later, I'm like, this place is cool. Then when I moved to Rocky River about two years ago, I said, I guess I'm staying. <laughs> it's really a cool little town. Um, and in actually nine years, I'll be moving here as well, so I'll be back and forth between the two, which would be really kind of cool. Uh, but no, Rocky River, we have a good time. It's eight miles west of Cleveland. Uh, we have Michael Simons, one of our good friends. He comes in every so often. Chris Hodgson. We have some really cool chefs in Cleveland now that are doing really good stuff. And they come to, I have a wine store that I own as well called Gravy's. And on Thursday, we do wine tastings every day of the week. When Crystal and Jim are Thursday, they come up and we sit no, wine at 3 o'clock on a Tuesday. We're up here every day. Much as we would like to be. Most days. Okay, so if they walk in at Tuesday at 4 o'clock, guess what? We're doing a wine tasting. And I get home at about 9.30, and they drive me home. <laughs> um, but it's a cool little place because it's just outside of downtown. So all the chefs live on the west side. So they'll stop at Grady's on the way home, open a bottle of wine, we'll make up some food. Because you're like, you know, I was thinking about this, and you were talking about the short group thing. And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So, and we play a lot, and then we just drink a bunch of wine, and somebody drives us home. <laughs> no, it's, it's a cool job. Um, back in Q, we have a ton of stuff. We do 99% catering. And I'm actually catering it tomorrow from here. Like a bridal shower that I told the I was like, I'm not there, I can't do it. She goes, come on. I said, all right. So, so we do a lot of catering with that. We also have a finer dining company called Local Flavors, which is like little baby cherry tomatoes stuffed with local goat cheese with herbs and topped with paprika and smoked sea salt. And, you know, so very intricate involved to set up 50 pounds of pork and smoke for six hours. So we do a lot of that fun stuff. And of course, we drink a lot of wine. <laughs> so party. Perfect. Huh? That's a social work. <laughs> uh, that's it. Any other questions about stuff tonight? The food you're having? Every course was nothing was used twice. So every component in every dish was only used once. So we didn't double use anything. We didn't do sauce the same thing. And uh, I'm really excited about it because the short rib is one of my favorite things. Hopefully I didn't just hype that up too much. I apologize. <laughs> Sucks that you hate it. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, when I came up with this with this recipe, I was in an event in Connecticut where we get to the wine festival, and I'm talking to a bunch of chefs like Bobby Flay and Jasper White, and we're talking about the short rib. And I'm like, you know, I'm doing this dish, and I'm like, what is that? And I'm telling them about it, and they're already done. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so it was really kind of fun. So. Oh, cool. Well, enjoy everything. I am going to... And we're going to head over. Okay, any questions you want to ask before we head over for dinner? I don't know. So I feel like every time I go travel anywhere now, it's kind of a joke. We'll go look and see if there's wine tasting somewhere. Because it seems like every state now, they're, they're growing, growing grapes. Do they do that out there? Ohio has a oh, huge yeah. wine community. It's ridiculous. Really? People that grow grapes, they're really proud of their wines. They grow like Niagara, they have yeah. Concord. What's the Niagara? We've got wine tasting in Niagara. Well, Niagara on the Lake is a whole region. Then you have the Niagara Peninsula, it's another region. Then you have the Ohio River Valley, is another wine region. And now, Ohio River Valley actually goes from, I think, Indiana through Ohio into Pennsylvania. It's a huge area. What, what kind of wine should you grow in there? Really bad ones. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. That's kind of what I got hey. like. Good yeah. answer, man. Good answer. It, it depends. They, there is some good boxy varietals and there's some hybrids that they're coming up with. Just, they're ice wines. Yeah, I was going to say that. Those are really good up there. The ice wines in that region, it's kind of like Canada. Yeah. You know, would you pay 50 bucks for a bottle of Canadian Chardonnay? Uh, no. 